Picking the top enterprise technology CEO of the decade isn't easy for a bunch of reasons, but one big one is tenure. CEOs rarely last an entire decade. Nevertheless, there are a bevy of chiefs that have had a big impact on enterprise technology as well as their companies. Hi, everybody. I'm Karen Roby here with Bill Detweiler, and Larry Dignan is with us as well. And before we get to the list, Larry, why don't we start with you? Talk a little bit about the criteria that was used to make these decisions. So we, we looked at a bunch of different things. And you know we also wanted to capture kind of the intangibles that these CEOs bring to the table too. So you know first we looked at the obvious things like revenue growth and the financial picture. Uh, we also looked at things like G2 ratings, like how they fared. Um, and then we also looked at just the scenarios that these executives came into. Uh, some had to turn around companies completely, some had to optimize, and some basically cook companies up out of vapor. Um, so, so that's sort of what we were trying to capture. So, so we almost did this like a, an Academy Awards type list, uh, categorizing different CEOs for different things. All right, and Larry, if we talk, you know, take a look at the list here, talk about a couple of them that really stand out to you. So the biggest one highlights kind of why we use the methodology we do. Um, because the uh, you know most influential enterprise company of this decade, hands down to me at least, is Amazon Web Services. Uh, they basically ushered in you know that cloud first kind of mantra that companies are using. They've had such an innovative um, path, and their cadence for services is pretty ridiculous. Like they just keep launching new products and. So where this got tricky is, okay, so you have the most influential company of you know, the enterprise, or you, know, you could argue that point, but generally speaking, AWS changed the conversation definitely throughout the decade. Um, but you have this scenario where you know, they had a CEO starting in 2016. So you know, generally speaking, we were kind of looking for CEOs that have been around at least since 2014, at least capture some of it. And you know, when you look at our list, very few CEOs actually lasted the entire decade. There was like Bill McDermott from SAP, Meg Whitman almost made it. Um, but generally speaking, not many. It's more of a six year kind of thing. So that was part of the other thing. And then the other thing with Amazon Web Services, you had uh, CEO Andy Jassy, you had Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, right? So there's some of that some of that customer focus that's there, you know, in the Amazon DNA is in the cloud unit too. And then you had CTO Werner, Werner Vogels, and then you also had uh, Andy Solipsky who wound up being the CEO of Tableau. So we kind of just crapped out and basically gave it to a bunch of people because it's almost like a team sport kind of thing at AWS. Um, so Andy Jassy gets a mention as does Jeff Bezos but you know, it, it's kind of hard to ignore the leadership of you know, what we see as the most influential enterprise company of the decade. Yeah, most definitely, Larry. And, and Bill, of course, there are so many great leaders on this list. Uh, who really stood out to you? So one of the ones that really stood out to us, um, and like Larry said, we, we looked at a variety of factors, um, was Mark Benioff, uh, co-CEO at Salesforce. Um, you know, and Benioff, um, may go down uh, or be remembered more for uh, bringing sort of a social consciousness mm -hmm. to business um, more than just Salesforce's growth. But he, he's also another person on the list who is really um, a cloud pioneer, right? And so uh, he was one of the first um, to really put customers first or to talk about putting customers first. Um, also to talk about trust as a corporate asset, um, and, and, and then to lay out a social vision, not just a financial vision or a strategic, or to put social consciousness into the vision for the company. Um, and so Salesforce has really become also more than just a CRM company. It's become a multi-cloud provider. Uh, it's grown with, acu um, with acquisitions, mm -hmm. and, and so, um, you know, the ultimate legacy, however, even despite um, the rapid growth uh, in sales from just 2017 over into 2020 here, um, is that sort of social first mantra, um, responsible ESG kind of investing uh, that, that Benioff uh, has really championed throughout his uh, career um, and uh, throughout, you know, from the very founding of Salesforce. 
Um, another one, and Larry mentioned uh, her a little earlier, was Meg Whitman. Mm -hmm. And we put um, Whitman on the list, um, former CEO of HP and then HPE, uh, as um, the stabilizer. You know, Whitman came into a company um, that was really reeling from a lot of bad decisions. Um, Mark Hurd had been forced out amid a controversy. Her immediate uh, successor had been fired by the board after about 10 months. Um, they had made a lot of um, what most people consider missteps in terms of decisions, deciding to scrap or the PC business. Um, they uh, uh, made some questionable, very expensive uh, purchases and acquisitions that many people panned uh, as being bad decisions. And they were really in free fall. And so Whitman was brought in uh, to help uh, stabilize the company. Now, you know, it was a tall order. Uh, when we were evaluating this list, I looked at a lot of things that Larry wrote, that we wrote on Tech Republic about the decision to choose Whitman at the time. And, you know, there was a lot of questions about whether she'd be able to turn HP around. And so I, I guess the ultimate thing about um, Meg Whitman is that she, she did her best uh, to stabilize what was a very um, sick patient at the time. Um, and it would ultimately, she canceled the decision to been off the P or to sell off the PC business. Um, they uh, dramatically went into a restructuring plan, resulted in quite a few layoffs to improve um, the company's balance sheet. I mean, so um, they took some drastic action to, to stabilize the patient. And, you know, ultimately that would lead to the uh, splitting up of HP uh, into a HP, which comprised the personal services group and HPE, the enterprise group, and both of them are still, I don't think anyone would really say that, hey, look, we've returned to the glory days of right. HP um, in the 90s and early 2000s, um, but it, the, the patient is in a much better shape for her tenure there. Yeah, she had some big decisions to make, and yeah. I think it would behoove us to not talk about Larry, uh, one CEO on the list that really helped get their company back in the game. So Lisa Sue is the AMD CEO. And if you were to interview anybody in 2010 what, about what they thought about AMD, um, you wouldn't get much, right? You basically thought the company was sort of, not on its last legs, but one of those sort of zombie type companies. And Lisa Sue gets a big nod from us because she basically set up this product cycle that has AMD really back in the game. So with their Epic server chip, they've really punched Intel in the face. Um, they're doing good work on GPUs. They're just doing a lot of things where they're going to be a secondary supplier in the enterprise, whether it's Intel or NVIDIA. And you know, in the chip business, these product cycles take a long time. So you know, if you look at Sue's tenure, uh, you know, she was, she's been there about six years or so. Um, but when you look at her tenure, you know, you got to figure four of those years, four of the first part of her tenure was really just focused on getting the research and the ramping up and the chip designs and all that stuff ready. And it, it's paying off in 2018 and 29 for AMD. So that's one of those things where you can't really look at the financials completely and go, oh, okay, so this thing's growing like a weed. So therefore, you know, their CEO needs to be, you know, named. I think Sue, was, Sue brought a lot of the intangibles to the equation, and it's paying off right now. Okay, Larry, and while we have you too, uh, what about the other big cloud player here, Microsoft? Yeah, so Microsoft Satya Nadella is probably going to be the consensus CEO pick of the decade. Um, and there's a little perception versus reality here. Um, so what Nadella did, he came in, restructured Microsoft, and more importantly, focused them on productivity. And so everything Microsoft's doing today revolves around productivity somehow. And the other big thing was they grew Microsoft Azure to be a solid number two to Amazon Web Services. Um, but when you look at what Nadella did, he, he didn't exactly inherit a thing that was a total disaster. Uh, it was more about an optimization job. So at, before Nadella got there, Microsoft was you know still playing into we need a Windows mobile operating system. They were still favoring Windows completely. Um, and Nadella came in there and said, okay, so we're gonna focus on productivity and we're gonna be multi-platform. 
So, you know, shock of all shocks is that when you talk about Microsoft these days, you're not really talking about Windows anymore. Windows is not a complete afterthought, but it's a pretty big afterthought. Uh, so Microsoft today is about, it's about CRM with Dynamics. It's about um, Office, a whole lot of Office across Android and iOS, which frankly is better on those platforms than necessarily Windows. And, and you just look at what Nadell has done, and it's really about focus. And that's one of the reasons why Microsoft's a trillion dollar company, along with Amazon. Um, so both, both of those two you know, top leadership plays, it was you know, about cloud and a lot of transforming the enterprise. Yeah, definitely, uh, Larry. And you know, there's just so many talented leaders, uh, Bill, here to talk about on this list. And uh, you can find much more about the CEOs that we've mentioned here and all the others uh, that made our list on ZDNet.